Welcome to this episode of Epilogue's Laser It Challenge. Is it possible to create a jig and template using the Iris camera system? We'll begin by placing a black map board scrap and the chain ring gear on the work surface underneath the Fusion Edge camera. Using a section of black map board will provide high contrast between the metal chain ring and the background, which is important for a good auto trace in a later step. Next, We'll use the autofocus feature to focus the iris camera to the chain ring for a life-sized image capture. To collect an image capture with the iris camera, open the job manager and click the camera option icon in the top right corner. Select the overhead video option to open the iris camera live video feed. The overhead camera provides a top-down view of the work area and includes an automatic setting for brightness and contrast. We can also turn off the automatic feature and adjust the brightness and contrast manually to achieve a custom result. For this example, we've turned off the automatic setting and adjusted the brightness and contrast to achieve a high contrasting result between our black map board and metal chain ring. With our brightness and contrast now optimized for an image capture, we'll select the copy background image button to copy the iris camera view to the computer's clipboard. Now within CorelDRAW, we'll paste our image capture into a new 24 inch by 12 inch document. Then right click the image and select edit bitmap to open the image in Corel Photo Paint, where a few more adjustments will be made. Select the crop tool from the toolbox on the left and draw a crop box around the chain ring, leaving a comfortable margin around the outside. At this point, we're going to clean up the teeth of our chain ring using the eraser tool. Doing so will provide a much better quality vector trace when we move back into CorelDRAW. Select the eraser tool from the toolbox on the left and begin clicking and erasing any gray pixels seen on the tips of the chain ring teeth. As a side note, the eraser tool comes with a few options to increase the size and shape of the tool, but for this example, the default settings work out perfectly to match the curve on the tip of each chain ring tooth. Once all the teeth of the chain ring have been cleaned up, we'll use the invert colors option in Photo Paint to invert the colors in our image. From the menu bar at the top of the screen, select Image, transform, invert colors to invert the image. Now we're going to remove the background of our image by utilizing the magic wand mask tool. Click and hold on the rectangle mask tool in the toolbox on the left and select the magic wand mask tool from the options. Now click on the black chain ring image to create a selection of the chain ring. Then right click the selection and select apply smart selection to mask from the menu. As a final step before moving back into CorelDRAW for our vector trace, we'll invert our mask selection by clicking the Invert Mask option from the standard menu bar at the top of the screen. Then press Delete to remove the background. To finalize our image and move back into CorelDRAW, we'll click the Finish Editing button in the standard menu at the top of the screen, then select Yes when prompted to save changes to the bitmap. Once Photo Paint has finalized our save, We'll move to CorelDRAW to create a vector tracing of our newly adjusted bitmap image. Back in CorelDRAW, with our image selected, we'll select the Trace Bitmap button in the property bar at the top of the screen and select Outline Trace, Low Quality Image from the options to open CorelDRAW's Power Trace feature. We'll start by selecting the color tab in the top right of Power Trace, then setting our color mode to RGB and colors to two. These settings will simplify the image vector trace and give us a black and white only result. Next, we'll go back to the settings tab for a couple of adjustments to our detail and smoothing settings. We'll set the detail to 100 and the smoothing to 31 and click OK. The power trace feature isn't perfect for all vector tracing projects, but for this black and white conversion and example, it works very well. Depending on various factors like brightness and contrast, bitmap capture DPI, and lighting, you may have to experiment with various power trace settings to achieve the results you see here. Once our vector trace is complete, 
we'll create a copy of our results and move them off to the side of our document area for use in a later step. To create our jig cutouts for the chainring gears, we'll only need the outline of the chainrings. To isolate the chainring outline, we'll right-click our vector group, select Break Apart from the menu options, then select the inner chainring holes we don't need and press the Delete key. With the chainring outline now isolated, we're now going to create a jig with four columns and two rows. To create our jig matrix, we'll start by selecting our chainring shape and while holding the shift key, drag a copy below the original and press the space bar to create a duplicate. Then delete the extra copy that was created. We'll now select the two chainring shapes and repeat the process until we've created a four x two jig setup, which will become the holes in our jig. Now select all the chain ring shapes, then in the color palette on the right side of the screen, right click black and left click none to give the chain ring a black outline with no color fill. We're now ready to print and cut our chain ring jig at the laser. We'll be setting up our laser process settings for corrugated cardboard. There are many types of materials suitable for jig applications, wood, acrylic, engravable plastic, and cardboard, for example. Corrugated cardboard is a great material for one-time use jigs as it's readily available and inexpensive. We'll begin this portion of the project by printing the file to the Epilogue software suite. Within the Epilogue software suite, we'll adjust the process type to vector, speed to 25%, power to 100%, and frequency to 50% then print the file to the laser. At the laser, we'll load our 24 inch by 12 inch sheet of corrugated cardboard onto the bed of the laser system in the top left corner. Close the lid, focus the material, and press the go button to begin cutting the job. Once the job is complete, we'll remove the unnecessary cutouts from the bed and place the jig back into position on the laser bed. Now it's time to prep our chain ring parts for engraving. If we were using an epilogue fiber laser, we'd be able to mark directly on the chain ring. But for this example, we're using the Enduramark Metal Marking Spray for CO2 lasers, a metal marking compound that gives our fusion edge with CO2 laser the ability to mark on bare metal components and parts. We'll lay out the chain ring parts onto a sheet of corrugated cardboard, then thoroughly cover the parts with the Enduramark black spray until the part is uniformly covered with a single coat of the metal marking spray. Once the metal marking spray dries, we'll place our chain ring parts into our jig in preparation for laser marking. Now back in CorelDRAW, we've gone ahead and used our jig file as a template to align and duplicate our marking file to the spaces in our jig where we've set up parts. The artwork we'll be using for the chain rings includes a serial number, data matrix code, logo, and chain ring description text. With our artwork ready to go, we'll select only the artwork we'll be printing for the job. Then we'll select print from the file menu at the top of the screen and be sure to click the selection button in the print range options. Before clicking print, we can verify on the right in the preview that we are only printing the artwork selected to the software suite, then press print. In the Uplog software suite, we'll leave the process type set to engrave and adjust the parameters for DPI to 600 speed to 30%, power to 100%, and dithering to Stuki, as well as bottom-up engraving. Then we'll click the print button to send our marking job to the laser. At the laser, begin the job by pressing go.
With the job now complete, spray the chain ring with water and wipe away the excess marking compound to reveal the final marking and finished product. There you have it, a chain ring jig and artwork template created utilizing the Iris camera system and Corel Draws graphics software suite. Then we mark the part utilizing an Epilogue Fusion Edge laser machine and Enduramark. We hope these tips and techniques help you with your success and next laser project. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Laser It Challenge, and we'll see you next time.